Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Another very practical example uh, is that uh, the, the one for the plates. For example, if I have a thin plate, if you imagine this as a plate over here, uh, and it's a thin plate Y compared to my X and Y direction, my Z direction is extremely small, right? So this is a thin plate. So thin plates are typically loaded in plane. So you have the in plane loading. For example, you pull it, you pull it like this. Thin plates never you know get this out of plane loading because of which the plate might easily buckle so the application of thin plates are mostly you know you have these in plate kind of loadings which are there right so this is also an example where if you see this if this is my xy plane over here all the loads that i am applying are along the xy plane i do not have any load in this particular uh, z direction that is there right so as you can see within this figure as well right if suppose the face of this plate is the xy plane all these forces that you are seeing act along the xy plane there is no force along the uh, along the uh, z direction that you have so what does what does this essentially mean so this means that if there are no forces along the z direction that automatically means that some of the stresses vanish so, so because the forces are related to the stresses or in other words the stresses are actually related to the forces right so if you don't have forces about a particular direction the stresses automatically vanish right for example the bottle example and the you know the range example which i was showing you in that particular one you're not applying any shear about the z direction you're not applying any normal force about that particular z, z direction so essentially your sigma z right your tau xz and tau yz anything any force that has to do with the z direction it essentially vanishes so if for the generalized state of stress remember the small element that we were looking at which had the stresses along all the directions now if you impose this condition this somehow becomes like this i have my sigma x i have my sigma y i have my you know tau xy but along the z direction this is my z direction along the z direction i do not have a sigma z i do not have a tau xz i do not have a tau yz as well so the generalized formulation that we looked at how does that change now let's go and take a look at that in the generalized formulation that is there right this was the, the the generalized form of what we had so now that if we you know do not have the sigma z and the tau xy and the tau xz so as you can tell automatically that uh, this particular element is going to vanish because your tau xz equals to zero your tau yz equals to zero so this is also going to vanish right and in these three equations over here which component is going to vanish well none of the strains are going to vanish because the strains depend upon the stresses in the other direction so only within these equations that particular component which only depends upon the sigma z that is going to vanish because my sigma z remember it is equals to zero so here uh, this component is going to vanish right in the second one also sigma z equals to zero so this is going to vanish and in the third one over here sigma z equals to zero so that is going to vanish as well right no epsilon z is not equals to zero sorry i uh, meant to write that this particular component over here that your sigma z is essentially zero right so you see now the strains become kind of simplified and if you come back and if you substitute over here if you do the transformations what you will find as it has to corroborate with what you saw in the you know the generalized state of stress after you remove the sigma z tau uh, you know yz and the tau tau xz that this is going to uh, disappear this is going to disappear and if you come back and if you put the values over here you will see that this particular component is going to uh, disappear as well right if you come back here and you put the value of the epsilon z and the epsilon x and epsilon y you can try doing that exercise and you will see that this one also disappears right so now that we have this one the 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 general set of equations after we impose these conditions you have a reduced set of equation as you can 
there right so this is the reduced set of equation that's that's what it looks like remember that for the expression of the epsilon x that we have over here now you do not have the new sigma z divided by e which we cancelled in the last page right you have a reduced equation for your um, epsilon y and uh, it's amazing if you see that your epsilon z although you do not have a stress about the z direction you do not have a sigma z it still depends and why it depends you can you have guessed it right it depends because of the poisson's ratio it depends upon the poisson's ratio so it depends it still depends upon the stresses along the x and the y but through the poisson's ratio right and among the shear strains so among the shear strains we have our tau xz and the tau yz vanish so we only have your gamma xy which is dependent upon the tau xy right? and this is again the you know the, the the transformation that you have been doing from the strains to the stresses so this is just the transformation you can put in the equations for the stresses that we looked at in the last page as well and you will essentially get the same set of equations that is there okay so that is the case of the plane stress problem so from the name itself since the word stress is involved we are looking at the cases where about a particular direction your stresses vanish right now from the name now can you guess what is going to be a plane strain problem yes you're right plane strain problems are those from the word strain itself you can tell that about a particular duration the strains are zero so previously we looked at about a duration the stresses were zero now we are going to look at the plane strain problems where about one particular direction the strains are zero so let's look at some plane strain problems right so plane strain problems as you uh, as you can see from the figures over here they have a wide range of engineering applications for example one of the very well known uh, applications of the plane strain problems are the dams right so if you take a look at this particular dam over here you know dams are water retaining structures see this is the this is the body of water which the you know dam is holding back and this is your you know normal functioning roads or you know something that you have and this is the, the that entire dam that you're looking at right so in this particular uh, dam that you have over here right if you if you think about the deformations of what is going to happen in this particular dam see it has at the left end over here and at the right end over here it has these restrictions right so at the left end you know it is kind of restricted at the right end it is also restricted over here so it has essentially no movement no deformation no allowed deformations in those two directions because the dam has to be in place right so there are no movement about that particular direction right the dam can have movement about the other directions but essentially what you are doing that you are restricting this movement as well as you are restricting this particular movement over here the dam can still move about this particular direction and a vertically upward direction as well right it can have you know some amount of uh, you know elongation maybe due to temperature due to the stresses of the water you can have some amount of deformations about this direction but no deformations allowed about these two particular directions over here essentially similar to this one as you can say this is just the hypothetical representation of the dam that you have right here you have all the forces and the deformations in this one but no deformations are, is allowed about you know this particular axis over here another example is gas filled cylinders when you have gas filled cylinders along which the both ends of the cylinders are you know sort of uh, fixed you are not allowed to move so suppose this is my you know z direction you are not allowing any you know kind of deformations whether and remember strains are related to deformations so in, if you if you are not allowing any deformations about the z direction that means you are not allowing any strains also along the z direction right what are the kind of strains that you are not allowing you are not allowing the normal strains you are not allowing the shear strains so any kind of strains you are you know um, the, you, are, you, are, you are restricting about that particular uh, direction that is there right uh, so if we just go ahead and take a look again from the generic formula if we just reduce it over here now what we are looking at that about uh, say a z direction if you take a look at our element over here about this z direction you're not allowing any amount of strain so essentially your epsilon z becomes equals to zero your gamma x z becomes to zero 
and your uh, gamma yz becomes equals to zero as well see analogically in addition to these two examples another example which i can give you uh, remember when we are looking at the thermal stresses right when we're looking about the thermal stresses you had this you know bar now if you see this one right if this is my you know x y plane over here so this is my say x and this is my y and say this is my you know z direction that is there sorry i probably misspoke right uh, so if my if this is my you know z, uh, z direction my x direction is going to be about say, say this is my x right uh, this is my z and this is my y right so when you are you know heating this bar and uh, if you have it clamped clamped over here if you're heating this one right then in that particular case you are going to have maybe expansion about you know this particular you can have expansion about the y axis you can have expansion about the x axis over here but about the z axis imagine if this is the z axis since it is clamped you're not allowing any movement right so all the strains the the epsilon z which you were having along you know these two you know z axis over here they are restricted your tau xz is uh, your gamma xz is restricted and gamma yz is also uh, restricted right so now that you have over here now as you can as you can tell that we can go back to our generalized set of equations and we can cancel some of the strains and we can see what is a consequent effect on the stresses that you are going to have right so again coming back to the generalized form now that we know that my entire uh, this epsilon z since i'm not allowing any epsilon this entire thing is going to vanish right uh, this thing is going to vanish as well and this thing is going to vanish as well right so these three equations go for a toss right we are still going to have this one and this one so my strain vanishes so do my uh, stresses also vanish maybe not because my stresses are also dependent upon the other kinds of strains which are there right so if we just go back and uh, if you take a look at the reduced set of equations uh, remember as we just marked in the previous page our epsilon z vanishes our gamma xz vanishes and gamma yz also vanishes the other strain quantities are there and um, as we did this is simply a transformation you can apply or you can you know input your epsilon z and gamma xz and the gamma yz in the previous equation you will essentially get the same set of the transformed equations right so these are the two categories of problems which are there which are the plane stress and the plane strain problems and what we just looked at are several of the engineering examples where um, you will see that several of the practical life scenarios or the practical life problems can be sometimes you know reduced into the plane stress and the plane strain problems you will learn more about these things in some of the advanced classes that you would take when you talk about plate theory or shell theory and so on you will see that some of those problems can be reduced to this plane stress or the plane strain problems that we have over here we are slowly reaching the end of our chapter on actually loaded members and the last topic that is remaining within this pack within this particular chapter relates to the concentration of stresses right so, and this is a very relevant, a very particular subtopic within this chapter. Why? Because you will see that uh, concentration of stresses or stress concentrations typically occur in members where you have discontinuity, right? So, if you have a member where uh, which is you know you, which has a uniform thickness and uh, in a good amount of length, and if you are applying the load, the stresses, the flow of stresses is very nice and smooth. But once you are coming and putting some cutouts. A very practical example of that that when you are you know drilling pipes you know drilling holes for pipes within a wall right you have this nice uniform flow of stresses within the wall and now you're coming and disrupting it by making a cutout for a pipe so how is the flow of stresses going to change because of this particular disruption and you will see that these kinds of examples of the stress concentrations happens at n number of objects around you i challenge you if you just look around you you will see n number of things where you have these holes and notches and you know uh, these cutouts which 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 affect the pattern of the flow of stresses right one example i can show you right now for example you see this calculator over here right in this calculator it, it was it, it used to be a nice plain member over here but now because of the keys over here you would have these small small holes and notches and cutouts now if i am pulling this calculator suppose these keys and all were not there if i'm applying the load p 
you know along both the ends at every section i will have a p divided by a where a is the area of cross section of you know this calculator which is there but now that you have come and punched these buttons over here you've essentially made holes in whatever is the material of this you know long of this rectangular plate over here you have made these holes so when i am pulling it near the vicinity of the holes of each of these keys over here near the vicinity of the keys or, you know which are which is a member of the plate still near the vicinity of the keys i am going to have the concentration of the stresses which are there right so also remember that uh, this whole discussion on the concentration of stresses if you think about it it goes back to some of the things which we discussed in our uh, you know the topic 2 when we were when, when we were discussing about the when we were learning about sigma x as if you vaguely remember that uh, that back in back that time we had uh, talked about the saint venan's principles what, and what did what did we you know discuss about that it was that if we have you know this this particular member right and if you follow my fingers through which i'm applying going to apply a load p for example right if you follow this one right if you see near the vicinity of my finger so where my fingers are this one and this one over here if you just just look at there you see those areas squishes some are squishes whereas towards the center you know these these vertical lines i mean take a look at the vertical line at the edge this one and this one over here compared to the vertical lines you know at the at the center right so the vertical lines at the edge have this you know kind of a broken kind of a pattern because there's a lot of concentration of stresses whereas the ones at the you know towards the center they are still vertical and they move kind of closer to each other so towards the ends you have this large concentration of the stresses whereas towards the center you have uh, you know the more or less the uniform uniform stress distribution so if i have to show this using uh, an you know engineering diagram something like this over here towards the end at this particular points you have the large concentration of the stresses whereas and this is what this point says over here that concentrated loads uh, result in large stresses in the vicinity of the application point so these are the places where you have you know uh, stress concentration right and the scientist who first worked on this one was saint venant he was a french uh, elasticity theorist and a mathematician who first studied this phenomena he also actually had you know enormous amount of contributions towards providing solutions for, for the navier uh, stokes equation right so he was the first one to to uh, study this closely and also you are probably wondering from this figure over here that if i have the concentration of the stresses at the very ends at what distances do i have to move from this p such that my general formula that sigma equals to p divided by a remember that's the, the formula that is there that sigma equals to the force divided by the area it is a uniform stress formula which is definitely not valid in this particular region but at certain distances away more maybe towards the middle of this bar over here your where your stresses have had a you know good enough amount of distance is sort of percolate through the best way to imagine this is suppose you have a uh, suppose you take a, a glass right and or a bucket of water and you put a drop of ink right from the top so when the moment the ink touches the surface of the water you have a large and suppose the color of the ink is blue the moment the ink touches the surface of the water you will have a large you know blob of blue color where the ink just touches it because it's very concentrated over there and as you move if you give it a certain amount of time as you move towards the bottom of the bucket you will see that the blue color more or less disperses and becomes uniform right so right at the point where the ink drop fell you have a large concentration of the blue color and as you move further away the the blue color sort of disperses through and becomes uniform very similar concept to this one over here here you see this load p over here it you know the, where this load is applied you have a large concentration of the stresses so sigma equals to p over a is not valid the sigma equals to p over a if a is the entire area of cross section you're looking at it is valid at certain distances from uh, the point of application of the load right so let's take a let's take a look at that and this is what it says over here that it becomes uniform at you know certain distances and we will see what that particular distance is and which something which uh, saint venant worked on back in the day right so if we are looking at the same example and i am presenting you three sections so let me mark these sections over here so this is a section one 
section 2 and section 3 and as these three different sections i am trying to look at what is the nature of the distribution of the stresses now if you see at section 1 which is at you know some distance away from the where the load is applied i have the the you know nice and easy that my stress is sigma f equals to p divided by the area of cross section which is h times t over here right sigma equals to p divided by a where a is the h times t right now if you go to let's jump over to section 3 which is very near to where the load is being applied and if you remember that is where that squishing phenomena happens at that particular point near to where your you know load is over here in these regions over here you are going to have a jumping up of the stresses and towards the edges you will see that um, uh, the, the stresses are practically nil so at the center you are going to have you know this kind of a distribution of the stresses if you're looking at this entire section this will be the distribution of the stresses that you will get right so at the center it is going to peak so this is the average stress which i have already found out and i have marked over here so uh, towards the center you will have stresses which are significantly higher than the average stress Right? and towards the end it will probably drop off to zero and if you look at an intermediate section as you can guess that your stresses are going to be sort of in between your one and three over here so you are going to have still have some peak at the center but at the same time towards the end it's not zero anymore it will have you know, some amount of magnitude so you transition from highly concentrated regions to lesser concentrated regions to uh, you know more or less a uniform region again if you're, if you're talking about the ink drop kind of an example your load sort of maybe starts to percolate you know something like this over here your you know eventually you percolate and you reach regions where your load distribution stabilizes and you have a more uniform distribution of the load now coming to the question that at what distance does the uh, sense of uniformity prevail it is found that and saint Finan found this that if you take a member with a h and a t right then at us at a certain distance t and suppose your h is the least lateral dimension so here i mean that my h suppose is less than t right so at a distance of a least lateral dimension from the point of application of the load your the uniformity is going to prevail so in those places you can apply the formula sigma equals to p divided by a over here right so at a distance h here when you go then you can apply sigma equals to p divided by h times t where h times t is the, a is the area of the cross section of this uh, particular you know rectangular uh, block that you have over here right now coming to some very practical examples of uh, stress concentration one what can be some of the you know practical examples one very practical example uh, is is uh, this one over here where you have in 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 a, in a plate you have a hole or a notch suppose this is your wall and you have you know drilled a hole for a pipe to go through so you are going to have some concentration of the stresses over there right so let's let's go and do a maybe a, a small uh, you know experiment so suppose this is this is your uh, this is your plate right suppose this plane of this this is your plate over here and here i have you know drilled a hole over here right and what i am doing suppose this plate is under you know i'm i'm just simply pulling my hands on both the sides right and i suppose this plate i'm pulling it under with a load p and a load p over here uh, such that it is under normal stress right now from from this that you have over here this a b c d over here that you have that where do you think that uh, this uh this, this paper that i have where do you think it is going to fit right among these four points right so when i'm pulling it here uh, you can probably guess that uh, it is going to fail at these points a and b and let's let's try to do that so if i'm if i'm holding this and if i'm sort of pulling it you see it fails exactly at the top and these bottom points over here. so that is where and it does not fail in other places so what does that tell you that that tells you that there has been some concentration of stresses at you know these two points a and b when when this was still intact right so uh, this uh, slide this this page essentially so shows that so if you have this plate with a hole over here and suppose the length of this plate is or the height of this plate is b and let me maybe also uh, mark the the thickness over here suppose you know this thickness that you're looking at is t right so your uh, and if you're looking if you are cutting a, a, a section in this particular uh, plate if you're if i'm cutting a section 
and I am looking at the distribution of the stresses over here right so you will have um, and suppose my sigma average sigma average is nothing but the, the average stress so suppose if I was cutting a section uh, maybe somewhere over here so my sigma average which is also sigma nominal sigma norm as you can see over here sigma nominal is equals to your p divided by uh, your b times t you know the height times the thickness that you have over here right so near the edge if i cut the section over here near the uh, near this particular section remember that in our case this this failed this essentially started to fail at this points you know a and b so near these edges you are going to have a peak in the stresses right so here you reach the maximum stresses sigma max and towards the end your stresses reduce these blue dotted line that you see over here this dotted line is just the average stress that is the p divided by b times so towards the end you may have stresses which is slightly lesser than the average stress but definitely where your notch starts where your hole starts over here in these two regions you're going to have the stresses which are high and for the design purposes you actually have the charts like this as you see on the on the right of your page over here which essentially tells you that how to calculate those maximum stresses so let's try to understand this chart first so this chart uh, as you can see it it is a uh, it is um, your in the y-axis you have a factor k over here so uh, you have k and in the x-axis you have d over b right if this is not clear let me just write it it is d over b right and what is my d and what is my b d is the diameter of the hole and b is this height of the plate that is there right and what is k k is simply through k you are see essentially you are trying to calculate the sigma max k is nothing but your sigma uh, k is nothing but the ratio of the sigma max to the average stress or the nominal stress so how do i calculate my sigma max sigma max is essentially this is what you're trying to calculate to calculate the peak stresses which is happening at the regions which which are tearing so that you can you know you can provide sufficient thickness so that you know your failure doesn't happen so sigma max is nothing but equals to k times sigma average or sigma nominal that you have over here so this chart essentially gives you the relationship that if you have a, a plate with a hole over here with a particular diameter d and a height of that plate as b right uh, and you know depending upon this ratio d over b how this factor k changes so for you know very very less kind of uh, ratio of the d over b so that means you know your, your b is sufficiently large so if you have a very long plate and your d is you know very small thick in those particular cases you're 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 going to have you know stress concentrations which are going to sort of shoot up whereas if you are you know going moving further away along the horizontal line you are going to have lesser amount of the value of the k over here right so this is the this is the case where you have the plate with the with a hole or a bolt over there right now another another example another kind of cutout that i can i can show you is um, something like this over here so instead of the circular hole i have a quadrilateral kind of a cutout so in in this one again i have marked the points as a b c and d now as you can as you can tell that if i have if i have to you know pull this along both the sides where is it going to rupture it is going to rupture at a and b so let's try doing that that, right so you see as i pulled it i you know sort of tore it at a and b so the tearing starts right at these edges over here and it it propagates towards the edge of the paper on the top so you can have one more example of stress concentration which is this one uh in that uh, in in this one you have uh, uh, the the you know this is this is the you have probably seen this kind of equipment as well uh, this is a very you know one of very useful engineering toolkits where uh, you know those fillets you kind of use suppose you have a rough surface and you have tried to sort of smoothen it out right so in those ones what you have you have a, a sort of change in the cross section right uh, a gradual reduction not a you know a sudden jump so as you can see you have a height b and a height c over here you have a gradual reduction which is marked by this you know this radii of curvature which is which has r over here that that particular radius and suppose you have uh, this thickness as 
t and t over here right so in this case also as you can imagine if you have a structure like that and if you are pulling it the failure is typically going to try to happen about here so you can maybe in your home you can make a you know a page cutout similar to the examples that we which we saw you can have a page cutout and as you will be able to see that the failure starts to happen you know in these particular regions as you are pulling with this force p now as you can tell for this one also uh, similar to the one with the circular hole which is a practical example the one the quadrilateral one which i just showed you this one is not a very practical example you you rarely have this you know rectangular kind of a cutouts in, in civil engineering structures mostly holes to carry the the the, you know, the pipes or you know these kinds of the ones which you are seeing on this page over here right so here also you have uh, these charts over here so sorry this is not the flat parts with circular holes this is flat parts with shoulder fillets i'm sorry about the error uh, with shoulder fillets fillets essentially mean these notches that you have that is called a fillet right so for for these cases what you get is that so this is again a similar chart remember that k that we looked at is is simply this one over here right k is the ratio of the maximum stress to the nominal stress where your the nominal or the average is p divided by c times t so you have this height over here times this particular thickness this is the average stress occurring in this particular region that is there right and you have for your you know different values of b over c why because now you have a varying section you have this b and your c over here so this is for b over c equals to 2 and this is you know where you finally end up with b over c equals to 1.1 so for these varying ratios you have these you know different lines which are there and for and for what essentially each of these lines tells you that if you have a, a shoulder fillet where you have a you know wider section followed by a thinner section and if you have the radii of curvature for that one because the x-axis if you see the radius of curvature comes in over if you have a very sharp transition for example here instead of this one being a smooth circular kind of a trans uh, uh, translation if you had a very sharp drop over here your stress concentrations are going to be even higher right so in those particular cases you see that when you have a, you know very very you know short kind of uh, a very sharp transition your k essentially shoots up at this particular regions over here right so so these are these are some of the examples where you have stress concentrations and you have these charts which are available in designers handbook so that every time you don't have to you know solve a solid mechanics or a finite element analysis problem these are uh, tabulated in tables so the designers of uh, this uh, shoulder fillets or when you are drilling a hole you quickly look up those charts and you know that what is the material you need to provide what is the thickness and what is the height that you need to provide right so with this we uh, are, are going to wrap up this particular topic i hope you enjoyed this topic the next topic which we are going to move on to uh, is is completely a different you know nature of loading so here we looked at members which are under axial loading in the next topic we are going to look at a completely different you know type of force we are going to look at torques right so nothing to do with the axial you know pull it is essentially you are twisting a particular we are looking at the chapter of torsion right so with that i would like to conclude this topic and i will see you guys very soon